gentlemen, this is Bob with Bob Leatherworks in Raleigh, North Carolina. What I'm going to do in this video today is show you two things uh, about accessories that I make for uh, lever action rifles and rifles in general for butt covers. Now this is a follow-up video on the first one I made using Marlin 336A's um, where I made uh, three of them one for a rifle I had in the shop and two stocks that were sent to me uh, a father and a son uh, both have 336A's and I made a video about uh, how I made those stocks and put them on uh, the rifle butts but I didn't go through how to do it um, I'm planning on making these uh, without having uh, you to send me the stock uh, if in fact I have it in the shop and I've just gotten a few more stocks uh, I've gotten uh, a Remington 870 with the butt pad on it um, I have a Ruger 77 which comes in a lot of calibers that's a bolt action stock a uh, bolt action rifle uh, there's no cheek pad on it and the stock uh, from Ruger is very much the same from rifle to rifle so that again is the Ruger 77 um, I have uh, a Winchester 1894 this particular stock was sent to me by the owner of the rifle so I don't have the whole rifle I just have his stock and I made this one for him with his initials on it BR there's my stamp right under his initials and on the back side I'm starting to put American flags on on most everything I make now if there's a space for it and it looks okay right there there's an American flag stamp um, you can see of course it's a Marlin there's his sling swivel uh, stud and what I'm going to do is go through and start putting this on to show you how it goes. And then I'll finish it up and come back when it's finished and explain to you a couple of things. One of which uh, I'll say now, this stock turned out to be thinner. Let me take the cover off. A little bit thinner um, than is an 1894 pre-64 stock. This just happens to be a bit thinner, and as a result of that, when I got the stock, okay, what I did was, this is the pattern for making these butt covers. See all the notes I have on here about what rifles it's good for, Marlin 336, 1894 levers, I haven't written 1895 on here, I don't believe. Um, but this is the pattern for cutting out the basic piece of leather where to put the, the holes how many rounds you can get on uh, uh, for 45 70s and so on and so forth so it uh, for custom fitting it's best and I say again best to take your stock off your rifle and send it to me that way when it comes back to you it will be on there if uh, you want to take it on faith and just call me and order one of these for your rifle and I feel that um, I can cut it, make it, and you can put it on, then I'll do that. But sending me the stock uh, obviously does not require an FFL and if you send it in a good box um, then I'll have it and then I can fit it properly to your rifle's butt stock. This was this is an 1895 Marlin um, 357. I was able to get seven loops on here. I just start sewing from here, work my way back to here, and when I think I'm gonna just about gonna run out of room for loops, then I finish it off with sewing right here. So I'm gonna take a pause. I'm gonna set up how to put this on the rifle. And then I'll be back and uh, show you again how to how to lace it up. So here comes a pause.
Okay, we are back. Now, what I have done is taken this, uh, this is Latigo lace, um, more specifically known as Utah lace, which is very grabby, very strong stuff. It's made from oil tanned hide, um, and it doesn't tear and or stretch that much, if at all. And I have laced it through the back holes, the uh, toward the back of the rifle and I have it right now uh, smooth side down rough side up flesh side up F-L-E-S-H flesh side up from the, le or the leather and I have run it through so that there are equal lengths from both sides coming out so when you would put a pull on this which I cannot get into the the way I have the camera set, you will have equal lengths. I can't put everything in here, but there are equal lengths of the latigo coming out. Now, you're going to fit it on here, hold it on here, okay? and the very first stitch, depending upon where you, whichever way you start, okay, is how you want to repeat. So this is coming again from underneath and then it's going to turn and go under and I have tapered the ends of the lace with a knife or a scissor whichever you've got and you get one going and then the other one goes underneath okay. However you get it started, there's the point coming out, and then you're going to turn it, making sure okay, that you now have, let me get this properly set so you can see it, okay. Okay. so we have established an under-over pattern, and you're going to be pushing, pulling, snugging this on. Until you get it nice and firm because you don't want to waste any more time going back and forth undoing it and redoing it but if you get that pull and that squeak you do not want to use any pliers for damaging the latigo and I think you can hear the squeaking going on so here we go that's the first stitch, or the first lace, whichever, whatever you want to call it, lacing, stitching, I guess lacing is better. So let's bring it up to the camera where you can really see it. That's how you start. So I'm going to take another pause, go forward a little bit more, about halfway, and then I'll come back to show you how I've progressed. Here we go. Okay. I have now gotten all the stitching or the lacing in. I'm going to call it lacing, not stitching. Calling the lacing, uh, you get tongue tied when you make videos. Got all the lacing in up to um, the last hole. Still have to do that one. But what I wanted to show you is that I have it even and I have the under and over the same going down. I started with this one under, so this one's under, this one's under, this one's under, under, over, 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 over. Got around the sling swivel stud comfortably, okay, plenty of room to uh, put the Uncle Mike's or whatever type you've got back in the hole with the adjuster or the uh, tightener on it and there's the Marlin button of course and I have snugged this up with my fingers I did not use the pliers this is on here nice and firm on the back you will see that the overlap that's in here okay, is properly centered on the on the top portion of the stock same on the bottom as it comes around and here you 
go. Okay. And also to, to tell you a little bit about how these are constructed, this is overlapping on this side because the gentleman is right-handed, so it forms a cheek pad on here. Comes over here. This portion is hand sewn because it's already glued down and I use my sewing machine to run these holes when it's unthreaded. So the sewing machine punches these holes. Then I go back with the Dremel and I run through to the opposite side and then once I've got a uh, hole all the way through from here to here this is hand sewn. Okay. Keeps the spacing looking like it's machine sewn but it's not. And then the sewing that goes all the way around the outer edges because this is only one layer of leather forms a strength on the edges. Okay. So when you're pulling down on this it pushes back against the punched out holes. These are 5 30 seconds punched out holes to accommodate this Utah lace. So now I'm going to finish this up and then I'll come back and show it to you finished up with a square knot down here and some of the excess cut away and I'll put some 357 or 38 rounds I have here 38 rounds and then I have all of the stocks um, that I have in the shop so far and I'll pass those in, in front of the camera and let you know what I have on hand okay. to make a decision about whether you would want to send me your stock or not uh, to have me make a butt cover for you so hang on for another quick pause and there is where we are so far be right back Okay, we are back. So here is the finished installation. And what I wanted to show you is that this again is the over under over under and came down here and made a single tight square knot. And I left this portion of the excess on. This is what I cut off from each one these two lengths right here okay. so you get when you're putting this on yourself you'll have a piece much longer than you need to work with okay. and these of course could move a little bit if you push them on hard but they are grabbing onto each other as they cross mm -hmm. these are 38 rounds just brass and lead there are green box Remington um, show the grain on that one here they are these are 38 special 158 grain uh, lead round nose that's what they are there's the label right there okay. Okay. so there is your finished installation you send me your stock, it will come back to you all ready to go without the bullets in it, of course, and your initials will be on here and my stamp. Either way, your initials will be on there. And again, I had to trim back about maybe 3 16th of an inch on the overall pattern when I first cut it. When I dampened it and laid it on the rifle I discovered that uh, if I hadn't have done what I did by trimming off some of the leather this length uh, it would have been a little tighter might have come right up to the swivel um, stud so I decided to cut it back a little bit now let me set this aside for a moment Okay, and show you the other stocks that I have in my shop um, to give you an idea. 
They're on the floor, so I'm reaching down. This is a New England uh, firearm single shot 12 gauge. This is a big stock, big butt, much bigger than the other one. And let me get a Marlin 336 up here. Give you a slight example. Uh, well, this one here, as I see it right now, this is the old style. Let me get the New England firearm one out of the way. This is the older Marlin 336 and the, the uh, 39A22. If you have an older one from the 60s and the 70s, you may very well have a big thick stock on the back of yours. Okay. Um, if you want to call me, I can measure this and compare it to your rifle and then we'll know, or, you know, yes, I've got an old one, it's that thick, I might not need your stock to make uh, a butt cover for it. These are, they don't do this anymore um, on the new Marlin 336As. Uh, they don't have all this um, extra pieces on here. It's just form fitted. They took away the the slot that's right here where your the heel of your hand goes, you know, in here on your palm, right there like that. They don't have those anymore, but on the old stocks, of course, they do. Okay. Uh, if you're right-handed or left-handed, that's important. If you're going to be holding her with your left hand, okay, then you want your bullets, okay. Um, over on the other side, okay, okay, up on your cheek. That's right-handed. Okay. Your bullets would be here, in here, okay. And your cheek would be here, vice versa. For left, your bullets would be here, your cheek would be here. Okay. So there you go. Marlin 336A or 336 in general, 30 caliber uh, lever action rifle or a 39A22. Okay, the next stock I have is, this is a Winchester, or excuse me, a Remington 870. Okay. And this was a fancier stock, but it's cracked. So I got it um, uh, from a friend, and there it is. Okay. This one's got um, checkering on it, which looks like it might have been pressed in. Okay. But these these 870s come with this these pads on them, whether you've got a new one or an old one. So, got to know the dimensions on your stocks. If in fact you're not going to send it to me. And here comes one more. Okay. This is. A Winchester 97. There's your big pistol grip on the wrist. Like that. This one's got cracks all over it. This is an old stock. Happens to have a Remington um, butt plate on it, which confused me when I first got it. But when I saw this, I went, nope, that's a 97. So this is the 1897 Winchester. Long, different shape. Okay. So I could put a lot of 12 gauge rounds on here, probably 7 or 8 over on the other side. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, maybe 7, possibly 8, probably 7 on a butt pad uh, for your 1897. <clears throat> Excuse me, butt cover for your 1897. And the last one that I have uh, in the house um, is this Ruger coming through because everything's all one piece this is a Ruger 77 okay, with her butt pad on her and let me turn it around hit the light while I'm doing it here we go okay you might recognize this color you know this burnt orange colored smooth uh, butt pad on this Remington or excuse me Ruger 77. Let's turn it around so you can read the label a little bit better. Try not to hit anything again. There we go. There's the Ruger 77. Comes in a lot of calibers. Okay. And also if you've got an odd caliber and I don't have the rounds, 
Hey, I'd appreciate you sending me um, some spent brass or live round in the mail so I can use it to make the bullet loops. That's that's the stocks I have in hand. Okay. So I'm not into everything while we're making the video. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a pause for a minute, is talk about lever wraps. Okay. There it is right there. Now, hang on, I'm going to reset this shot, make it a little tighter so it's easier to show, show you what I'm doing. And I'll be right back after this quick pause. Okay, I am back. And here is a Winchester 1894 lever out of the rifle with a laced on lever wrap. Okay. And this tie right here is both functional and decorative and I'm going to show you why. Okay. These come in kits and before I show you that let me show you a couple of things about the kit and then I'll come back to uh, showing you what's underneath that tie. When you get a kit okay, you are going to get get things right for the camera. You're going to get a document from me with photographs that instructions on how to lace a leather wrap onto your uh, rifle's leather lever. So you're going to get pictures and now you're going to have this video of the step-by-step -step of how to do it. So you get six, seven, eight pictures And here are the pieces and the parts. Here is the wrap itself. All the holes are pre-punched. Um, this is the flesh side of this. This is high-end upholstery leather. Okay? Good stuff. Made from real cows. I put an extra piece of material down the middle, glued on, okay? which is going to wind up up against the bottom of, excuse me, the inside, not the bottom, the inside of your lever wrap. It, this piece of material is in here on the inside. Okay. You are going to get your long piece here to make this okay, this finishing um, tie or knot, whatever you want, we want to call it. And you're going to get a long length of wax thread and two blunt tipped, not pointed, but blunt tipped needles. And here they are. Get it up to the camera. Maybe you can see the blunt tips on them. That go very easily through the holes that are pre-punched. Okay. And I've also got the, um, the lace ready to go, already through the eyes of the needle okay. with a pullback. This is one piece of, of lace with the needles on both ends and pushed through the eyes or inserted through the eyes and ready to go. You're going to want to, again, just like on the butt cover, you're going to want to slip it through and get it even to start. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pry open, pull back, whatever language you want to use to get this knot or tie a little undone just to show you what's under it because these these materials grab on to, to, to itself and get very tight okay now I've got it loose with my fingernails okay so let's get it undone right here okay I'm taking it down Right like that, and there it is, just to set it back. Okay. You can see all of this. Okay. The very first stitch that you're going to make, 
here is going to be not a stitch but the start the start is the best way to say it is to run this material this wax lace through the trigger guard okay, and make sure that it's even on both ends as you start it's a little awkward hard to show so I'm explaining it you are going to come up from underneath the inside of this piece of material and there it is okay. Okay, and you're going to fold it over, push it underneath fold it back over get your lace through the holes okay and snug up the first stitch okay and then you're going to be pulling pushing gathering this around it will do it as you handle it and squeeze it up onto the underside of your lever with the lacing facing downward okay and let's get it facing downward just like it's on your rifle facing downward so then this finishing knot okay, comes through here okay, like this okay. then you're going to gather it up okay. and I think I'm going to have to point the camera down hang on one second okay I reset the shot reset the shot a little bit Okay, so there is the tie coming around, and then this one comes underneath, just like that. This one goes through here, like that. Excuse me, this one, I don't have it set yet. So this one comes up and under here, just like that. I've already cut the excess off of this one and I'm putting it back on so I don't have the extra length to work with but there it is okay so now you can see okay how I have it it's not tight yet but it's going around okay. so get it to where it covers up that first lacing okay you can push it pull it get it to where it go, needs to go okay. and keep pulling on it like that okay. and it will cover up the wax lace stay in the shot so you can see what I'm doing here okay. get it to cover it up okay. and also provides for better way for your hand to hit it and give you a cushion from staying in the shot to do it and there it is right there just like that there you go okay. so work with it watch look at the pictures look at the video cover it up There you go. There's your lever wrap. Same thing. This is also called the baseball stitch. Okay. Where you're you're lacing under and over, under and over, under and over, always pulling it tight. Don't use the pliers. Use your fingers. Work it through okay, to get it to where it needs to go. At the end, you're going to tie another um, square knot, cut off the excess, and you can hit this. This stuff um, will melt to some degree because it has wax in it, and you can tie off uh, a couple of knots if you have some extra, and you want to tuck it underneath. If you've got uh, tools like this at home in your shop, you can poke and push an, uh, a piece that's um, hanging out underneath or you can melt it okay, and it will work its way down 
So there's how to put on a lever wrap. Okay. And how it looks. Okay. Alright. So, thanks for watching. Uh, from Raleigh, North Carolina, this is Bob. Call me. Everything you need to know about how to order um, a lever wrap kit. Okay, or to uh, get a butt cover made for your rifle is there. These lever wrap kits go on 1873s, 86s, 92s, 94s, and Marlin 336s. And I also have them for, this is a shorter and slightly more narrow uh, lever wrap piece for your Marlin 39A and Henry's too. As long as they have the same proportion size levers, which they do. Okay, okay there's the kit for the, the 22s. Okay, and the instructions are the same. Okay. So, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and look at the end titles for how to get a hold of me. Okay, bye bye for now. And Merry Christmas 2014. Bye-bye.